so we shall now discuss about what is definite integration this is also called definite integrals so in, in order to deal with definite integration you should have sound knowledge of indefinite integrals first of all so in in the indefinite integrals what we had done actually it was x to the power n dx where uh, xn is function of x for example and in that case it was x n plus 1 by n plus 1 plus constant term and uh, derivative and uh, in, uh, diff uh, differentiation is also called derivative and integration is also called antiderivative that means as antiderivative of x to the power n dx is x n plus 1 by n uh, plus 1 plus a constant term so when you take differentiation of this term the function must be your answer must be x n so let's check it so we are taking differentiation of x n plus 1 by n plus 1 and plus constant equals to 1 by n plus 1 because n plus 1 is constant so we take it out common and then this is d x n plus 1 over dx and plus d c by dx and this is 1 by n plus 1 times use formula for in the uh, in the differentiation that n x n minus 1 and in that case it is n means it is n plus 1 in this case you can see the power of n so d x n by dx equals to you know that this is n x n minus 1 so it is in place of n there is n plus 1 so x n plus 1 minus 1 and then that's done and plus derivative of constant is always 0 so these two terms have been cancelled out and plus 1 minus 1 also cancel out therefore you are left with x n okay so if anti derivative of x n is x n plus 1 by n plus 1 then derivative of uh, plus constant so the derivative of this term must be x to the power n so let's now discuss uh, how to find the definite integral of the given function all right so before going into details of the theory first of all we'll discuss about technique to calculate the definite integrals so in this case let's take up one example so you can say this is 2 to 3 and x to the power 3 dx and then you know the integration of x q is if you apply x n plus 1 by n plus 1 it's going to be x to the power 4 by 4 and then there should be constant term all right and then you take this value 2 and 2 3 so here 3 is called upper limit and 2 is called lower limit all right so we put uh, this limits until we complete substituting these values in the given integration so here in this case uh, after taking the integration so first of all uh, we put in place of x3 so this is uh, 3 to the power 4 by 4 and there is a constant term so there is nothing to put for that and then in between upper and lower limit you put the sign minus and then now this lower limit is 2 so you put this value 2 so 2 to the power 4 by 4 and plus c and now you open this bracket so it is 3 to the power 4 over 4 plus c minus 2 to the power 4 over 4 and minus times plus is minus c and you see that in the definite integral case constant term constant terms get cancelled out so therefore there is no need of writing constant term while dealing with the problems 
about definite integrals all right so it is 3 to the power 4 over 4 and minus 2 to the power 4 over 4 so in this case it is uh, 81 by 4 and then this is 16 by 4 so if you deduct 81 and 16 it's going to be 65 by 4 so this is the answer okay so therefore in general you can write integration of any function between the lower limit a and upper limit b of xn then your formula will be like this x n plus 1 by n plus 1 and from lower limit to upper limit after taking the integration of this function so we keep on writing uh, this a and b these limits up uh, until we uh, put this value back to this integrated function but it should not be minus 1 because if you take integration of x to the power minus 1 then in that case you can see that x to the power minus 1 plus 1 and this is minus 1 plus 1 and limit from 3 to 9 for example so it is x to the power 0 by 0 uh, 3 to 9 and then it is 1 to the power 0 that means it is undefined all right so make sure that so to understand that n can be any number but it cannot be minus one okay guys you may now pause here and try these sums as your classwork so these are the answers here now we will discuss about area under a curve under a curve means any function if it is given like y equal to fx and this uh, suppose that this is a graph of any kind of curve here and uh, x belongs to r and uh, the range that is uh, value of r depends on the domain of the function and the type of this function all right so here we are going to find area under a curve area under a curve means this is a curve and we take some part of the curve under which we have to find the area between two values of x you can say x equals to a and x equals to b so in uh, general we can also calculate by using the graphical method but that graphical method is usually tedious so calculus method is most appropriate and accurate method of finding area between non geometrical shape like this all right so here in this case we, what you can do actually between x equals to a and x, x equal to b we can divide uh, we can we shall try to make uh, consider some rectangle maybe 11 12 13 14 and 15 16 maybe 100 rectangles so in order in order to make it visible i am taking here only few rectangles here so you can see that although although we are saying the rectangle but this sort of area is missing out in the integration even though if you add all these rectangles okay so general theory is that when you add area of all these rectangles that means gives you the area under the curve in between x equals to a and x equals to b where you can say that a as lower limit and b as upper limit in this case so the for example, if you consider that to, that to be a rectangle, then area of this rectangle is height, you can see this is y1 and its width is delta x, we write delta x, alright, delta x means it's a very small width, alright, uh, and then similarly the area of another rectangle is height is y2 and its width is delta x, so we keep the rectangles of width equal, but heights are different practically here and similarly you can find the area of each rectangle that 
how many rectangles we have considered over here. But in this case, what you can consider actually, while taking the area of, uh, of this rectangle, although you add area of this rectangle, you will get the area between A and B, but you will have some error that, uh, some area that will not be covered entirely. So here you can see that this is the extra area that we have not covered while adding area of this rectangle. All right, and similar thing happens here, here, and in I, almost all rectangles. Okay, here in this case. So what you can consider here that first of all we say that the total area under the curve between the line x equals to a and x equals to b is area means we add up all area of each rectangle. Then it is y1 dx plus y2 dx plus dot dot up to 13th rectangle if you have drawn then you can write y1 1 3 dx and in general if you have drawn n rectangles you can write y n dx so that's that is supposed to give area of this total rectangles but what happens when you take delta x tends to 0 that means uh, as delta x tends to 0 uh, you can consider a very large number of rectangles over there that means when delta x is narrowed down then what happens for example here this line will get overlap over another line and then you will consider that when delta is extremely small in that case it will give you the perfect rectangle over here for example all right a similar thing between these two rectangles uh, you can consider like if delta x gap is very small then as if they would like they, they have coincided to each other and if there is very large number of rectangles with no gapping in between the curve and this rectangle then you can say that there are so many rectangles where delta x tends to 0 then it gives you the integrated area under the curve between x equals to a and x equals to b so therefore we can say that when delta x tends to 0 each incomplete rectangle becomes or tends to a complete rectangle and therefore as delta x tends to 0 you can write in general the height of uh, each rectangle height of rectangle is y x and the width of rectangle is delta x in general so summation of this you can take it here and as delta x tends to 0 then area will be given by the integration of the given function y equal to fx in between um, the low, lower limit uh, x equals to a and upper limit of x equals to b now when you get this integration well how do you find the area so first of all you integrate you, t you took the area below x equals to a then area below x equals x equals to b then area below x equals to a so area when you deduct area below x equals to b area below x equals to a from area below x equals to b then you will have this area of this shaded region all right so therefore first we take the value upper limit that is below b this is the upper limit and then we take the value lower limit after the function is being integrated let's apply that how the area under curve can be found out here so let's consider an example like this this example states that Consider the area bounded by the curve y equal to x square, the x axis, and the lines x equals to 2 and x equals to 5. So, you have to find this shaded region's area. So, what you can do actually? We integrate this function y equal to x square between x equals to 2 and x equals to 5. So, we apply this general rule to integrate the function and after that, when you integrate the function, you know that area below x equals to 5, that is the upper limit, and minus area below x equals to 2, that is the lower limit. So, we deduct these areas. So, that means when it, uh, x is 5, then you put 5 here. So, 5 q by 3 minus 2, then it is uh, 2 q by 3. All right. So, after calculation, the area is 39 square units. Let's do an, another example. So you have to 
find a equals to what when y equal to minus x square so this is the part of the curve y equals to minus x square between the lines x equal to 2 and x equals to 5 so let's try it so area is given by the value a to b and then this is you can write y dx or fx dx and then in place of a you can see this is 2 and in place of 5 uh, in place of b you can see this is 5 and y equals to minus x square is over here and dx take this minus sign outside and then this is x square dx 2 to 5 and take the integration of this function now so integration of this function is this is x square so this is x cube by 3 okay and as this is x cube by 3 And then lower limit is 2 and upper limit is 5. So it is minus 5 cube by 3 minus 2 cube by. So we are putting 2 in place of x. So 2 cube by 3 over here. So after calculating this, you will find it is minus. It is 125 by 3. And this is 2 to the 4 to the 8 by 3. And then if you deduct uh, 8 from 125, it's going to be 117 by 3. And finally, it is minus 39. All right. But note that area cannot be negative. Okay. So area is always taken as positive mathematically. So therefore, what you have to do when you get the value of area that happens usually below x axis then we have to take the absolute value of this value of the area that you obtain through the integration method so therefore the area in this case is absolute value of a that is absolute value of 39 so area is in fact it is 39 square unit all right so this sort of uh, concept can be applied here like Upside this x-axis, the area is positive and towards the uh, downward of this x-axis, the area mathematically in, in your calculation you will get this is negative, but area cannot be negative. Therefore, we have to take the absolute value of this area. So, let's, this, uh, let's do this problem first of all. So, here you can see that this example is test that for the curve below. And this equation is y equals to x, x minus 2, x minus 6. And when you expand it, it is x cube minus 8x square plus 12x. So find the total area of the shaded region. That means you have to find the area of this curve under the value of x. You can see it is x equals to 0. And here x equals to 2. And then in another, another time, you have to find area between, under the curve between x equals to 2 and x, x equals to 6. And finally, you have to add this area in order to get the total area uh, total area of this set region. So let's mm, do the integration first of all. So here in this case, the area is, so we call the integration we will take here. So in the integration of uh, the function here, it is x, x minus 2, x minus 6 dx. And when you expand it, it will be <coughs> x cube minus 8x square plus 12x dx and then integration of x cube is it is x to the power 4 by 4 minus 8 times x to the integration of x square is x to the power 3 by 3 plus 12 integration of x is times x square by 2 all right and you don't need to write constant here because you have uh, seen in the beginning that uh, the constant terms get cancelled out so you don't need to write here because we are taking only the integration in this case and then we'll put the value of x for the given shaded region so we divide this into two areas you can say this is a1 and you can say this is a2 so if i am writing a1 then a1 has integration between 0 to 2 so you can write here uh, 
x4 by 4 minus 8 x cube by 3 plus 2 and 2 6 so this is 6 x square and then you can write here lower limit as 0 and upper limit as 2 if, as if we are talking of this shader region in yellow color all right and now we do the same process so first you put the upper values uh, for x and then you put the lower values for x so why, when you put upper value of x then better use this sort of bracket and then this is 2 so 0 to 2 means 2 we are putting uh, putting for x so here it is 2 to the power 4 by 4 minus 8 times of 2 cube by 3 plus 6 times of 2 a square minus here in this case you can see all the terms are becoming 0 as lower limit is 0 so you can write 0 minus 0 plus 0 and then take a calculator so once you calculate this value in the calculator it will be 20 by 3 so here the area is already positive and if you would like to find a2 for example so a2 means area of this area, this shaded region so a, a2 you have to you can use the same integration here this is x to the power 4 by 4 minus 8x cube by 3 plus 6x square but in this case uh, the range of value of x have been changed here from 2 to 6 so it's from 2 to 6 2 to 6 so we do the same procedure now 3 but you know that the area cannot be negative so therefore we take the absolute value of this second set of regions area so therefore the total area you can write this is a1 plus absolute value of a2 why absolute value of a2 because this is negative negative number so it is a1 is now 20 by 3 and then plus a2 is negative 128 by 3 so finally it is 20 by 3 plus 128 by 3 so 20 and 128 is 148 by 3 you can leave your answer in exact form like this or you can write that means it is 49 whole 1 by 3 so this is also in the exact answer form or sometimes uh, it will be asked you to write correct to the three significant figure or these many decimal places you can do so also just convert that into decimal then it will be 49.3 square unit so in the previous example we have found area of the shared region under given values of x between x axis okay but here we find the area under the curve for given y equals to 1 2 3 but and also uh, between the y axis in this case instead of you write area uh, area equals to different integral from a to b of fx dx that is y dx the things have been reversed here so instead of y, d, uh, y dx we have to integrate x with respect to dy so you can see uh, that the diagram shows the curve y equal to under root 2x plus 1 so it is given in terms of y equal to fx but we have to convert that in term of x equals to fy okay and the diagram shows the curve y equal to under root 2x plus 1 the shaded region is bounded by the curve the y axis not the x axis in this case and the line y equals to 3 find the area of this shaded region so in order to do so uh, we take this exam this function actually so area in this case is not fx dx but it is 
fy dy that is x dy and between the range of value of y from 1 to 3 so we have to convert this into in terms of uh, x equals to fy so here it is y equals to under root 2x plus 1 so if you square both side then it is going to be y square equals to 2x plus 1 so it is 2x equals to y square and take this to the left then it is minus 1 and therefore in place of x you have to write this is y square minus 1 by 2 or you can write half times of y squared minus 1 okay so 1 2 3 your function is x is now it is 1 by 2 y square minus 1 dy not dx at this time now so it is half is constant so take it out and then it is integration of y y square with, with respect to y is now it is y q by 3 and integration of 1 with respect to y is y okay and the lower limit is 1 and the upper limit is 3 equals to 1 by 2 now put this upper limit value for this variable y so it is 3 to the power 3 by 3 minus 3 and then another time in between lower and upper limit uh, value substitution there is uh, there is sign minus and then we start again this bracket curly bracket now we are working for y equals to 1 so it is 1 q by 3 minus in place of y again 1 now this is the turn to calculate this value this is 1 by 2 and you can see that this is uh, 3 q and there is 3 so 1 3 has been cancelled out and here 2 is left so it is 9 minus 3 and it is 9, 9 minus 3 and this is 1 by 3 minus 1 then calculate it further it is half and then this is 6 minus uh, it is uh, 1 by 3 so 1 by 3 minus 1 you can see here this is 3 is LCM so it is 1 minus 3 so it is minus 2 by 3 and minus time minus will become plus so this is plus 2 by 3 and then it is 1 by 2 and then times it is 6 3 is 18 plus 2 is 20 and then this is uh, 20 by 3 so 2 ones are 2 tens are here so it is now 10 by 3 a square unit you can say answer a square unit also you can write 3 3 is 9 so this is 1 by 3 a square units so these are these are the exact answers but if you like you can also find it like 3 times of 3.3 again 3 you can write a square units if you are rounding rounding off this number correct to 3 significant figure pause it here and now try the following problems